We are now just one month away from the new F1 season, of course, with all the new liveries revealing, means that we've got all new merch drops. The 2022 McLaren replica launch has now gone live, as well as the 2022 Ferrari collection, and of course, yeah, the Puma drop as well, featuring brands from Mercedes, Red Bull, and Ferrari. Of course, there are options available for every single team still. Click the link down below, and yeah, buy yourself some merch for 2022. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with something a little bit different. Yes, of course we're back once more, as some of you guys that watched my second channel will already be able to tell, on iRacing. Um, last weekend, the Bathurst 12 Hours decided it would happen on the sim. I would do a video on how our race went, but it was absolutely heartbreaking. We led for about eight hours until we got taken out with just over an hour to go uh, by a lapped car, which was absolutely gutting late on in tonight, hence why there has been no video from that over on the second channel. But it did get me thinking, how quick would the new AMG by Mercedes go around this track? Obviously, I thought now I've got some laps in, everything like that that we would take it on here today on iRacing. Of course, though, before we jump into this, if you guys missed out on the video I did yesterday when we went through the championship finale of our My Team Season 5 career mode, you know, priorities, go, go back and check that video out and then come back to this one. This is just going to be a fun little experiment video here today. Now, I cannot stress this enough. I have not done a single lap around this track in this car before we dive into this session, so this is completely a step into the unknown today, but immediately it feels quite good to be back in this Mercedes here on iRacing. Of course, we did a video many, many months ago, uh, actually around the Nürburgring in this car. So I'm just going to turn up my audio so I can hear the car a little bit better. And yeah, what we're going to be able to do today is certainly going to be very, very interesting. Of course, first couple of laps will just slowly ease the car in everything like that you know i sort of want to do more of these experiment videos as the year goes by you know sort of taking this mercedes around different venues because i mean let's be fair as much as we all want to believe it'll happen we're never going to see formula one cars in anger going around mount panorama of course jensen button many many years ago did a lap in one of the older mclarens and i think that was around the one minute 40s there or thereabouts i want to say so i mean this car naturally is a lot quicker than that anyway and hopefully yeah we're going to be able to try and push towards the limits of the car as well i mean i'm hardly the best eye racer in the world but yeah we'll wait and see as to what we can do around a lap but yeah that probably is going to be sort of like the baseline time that we're going to be trying to go up against you know a modern gt3 car will go around here in about two minutes three in race trim you know if you're a fairly competent eye racer you know probably a little bit quicker see everything depends on track temps and things like that, you know. Uh, Aussie V8 will go around here in about 2 minutes 6, 2 minutes 7. They're ever so slightly slower than GT3s, but of course a little bit slippery down the straight. But yeah, no idea sort of what this car is going to be able to achieve. Obviously, for those of you that don't know, how, first of all, do you not know about Bathurst? It's obviously one of the pinnacles of Australian motorsport. A 6 kilometer circuit famed for the 1000, of course, in the Australian Supercar Series. And then, of course, also uh, the Bathurst 12 Hours. That I think this year is actually going on in May, rather weirdly. So that'll certainly be interesting to see. Of course, a race around, yeah, one of the most difficult tracks in the world. As you would have probably seen from sort of our first outlap here. You know, the walls are very, very close around most of this circuit. There is absolutely no room for area. You know, the track falls away from you in a lot of places as well, which certainly make this place rather much of a challenge yeah there is absolutely nowhere to hide around a lap around here for the most part of course famous corners griffin's bend hell corner the chase everything like that the cutting as well you know we'll run through those when we start doing some laps in anger in just a moment i'm sort of just trying to get the battery up and everything like that at the moment gotta make sure i actually put it on to pull uh it's trying to save battery even We'll go harvest. Oh, I'm not going to do it on the downhill section. We'll harvest down in towards the final couple of turns. And then we'll go full deploy on our next lap. But yeah, this track is... I mean, if you've never driven it and you've got iRacing, give it a go. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you've, if you've got a lot of other games it does feature on. You know, Gran Turismo Sport, it's on. Forza Motorsport, it's on as well. It's, it's a pretty well-known circuit. And I'd be very, very surprised if there was many of you that didn't know about this track but yeah let's put it into quality mode then 
as we get ready to start our sort of first proper lap in anger. Of course, I'm not using any setups for this or anything like that. Um, mainly because we're actually in test drive mode at the moment, which I've never used on iRacing. I wanted to go on and record this video as iRacing decided they put an update out at the same time. But yeah, getting ready then in towards the final couple of corners. Let's try and take this thing for a bit of a lap in anger then. Tyres might be a little bit cold, but stamp on the throttle at the final corner. And just remember how much this thing grips up down into towards turn one, breaking just before the 50. Running a little bit wide there through Hell Corner, but riding on the power on the exit as we head up the hill in towards Griffin's Bend. Of course, you can make moves up here, you know, use the slipstream if you get a good run out of turn one. And then we're going to be breaking it around the 50 in towards turn two. They're tipping in, attack the curbs on the inside. You've really got to get up close to the wall on the exit through the cut in, probably pinned in this thing. We'll do a quick blend this time around as we try and build up some confidence. Then really, really easy on the throttle. A big, big bump through there. These next S's are horrible in a GT3 and not really a challenge in a Formula 1 car as I'm expecting these next couple of corners as well to be. Yeah, just absolute full commitment as we head over the top of the mountain there in towards Skyline. Definitely going to have to break down into here, but not as much as you'd expect through the first part there. Flick it through the next couple of S's. Of course, the wall's just absolutely closing in on you there as we head now down the hill in towards Forest Elbow. And then right on the throttle again on the exit. Full deploy now as you head down the back straightaway, down in towards one of the most infamous corners and the fastest corner in Australian motorsport there. We're running out of battery. Still over 300 kph despite the lack of setup here. I mean, the chase here is not a challenge in a Formula 1 car. It's barely a corner at all. And then on the brakes at the 100 meter board, down in towards the final couple of corners of the lap. It's so, so easy to light up the rears in a slower car than this. But down in towards the final corner. Oh, a little bit wide there, snagged the brake. But what is this first proper lap going to be? That's a 134. <laughs> oh, this thing's wrapping around here. And I mean, that's with no setup. And we, I mean, we ran out of battery as well. I'm going to put it back on saving the battery as well. Then we'll try and slowly build it back up. Uh, we'll go no deploy. So hopefully now it's going to charge back up once more. But oh my, what a lap. What a car this is around here. Like I said, I mean, we're never going to see Formula 1 cars go around Bathurst in real life in anger. You know, I would love to see, you know, maybe if we've got an Australian team in the sport, maybe if Oscar Piastri, you know, if he has enough success, perhaps doing some demo runs around here in the future. But yeah, I don't think it's something we're ever going to see. You know, this track is very, very dangerous. I mean, all these walls are concrete. There is no room for error around here, as we found out. In the 12 hours over the weekend, you know, it is just a brutal, brutal circuit still at the end of the day. Trying to charge up the battery as best as possible, but it isn't charging actually as quickly as I thought it would. So perhaps, you know, in real life, this would actually be quite a difficult track to build up charge at as well as we head down in towards the chase once more. We are slowly building the battery up to where we want it to be, but, you know, I want to go for another attack mode lap in just a moment. I definitely don't fancy trying to do a lap round here with brake magic on because I think we would very, very quickly find ourselves heading right towards the barrier. Should be able to save up a little bit more under braking, but yeah, about to get ready then. We'll go for another attack mode. I do love this Mercedes on iRacing. Perhaps this time round, we're going to try and really, really concentrate. No commentary. Let's go for it. There's just so much grip in this thing. Every time you feel like you've got on the brakes too late, it's still 
just finds a way to slow down around here. And I mean, we're another three and a half tenths up as we head down in towards the final couple of corners under the Fuso Gantry. Once more, we're still finding time, of course, to just that little bit more battery left in the store. But baking down, oh, attacking the curbs there again. Oh, back end really tried to break away that time. Eight tenths up now. Is this going to be... A sub at 134 as we flick it in, attack the curb through the final corner on the grass. And that's a 34 dead. I'm going to have to do one more. We've got to go sub 34 around a lap here. I'm going to save up the battery and I'm going to see you guys on the other side. This is so much fun. So much fun trying to hook this car up around here. You have to give this a go on iRacing or, of course, a set of Corsa. You know, get some mods downloaded on PC or use the S, uh, the SF71. I think there still is on there, but what a wild combo this has turned out to be on iRacing. As I would expect, you know, this is sort of, the, yeah, like I said, a little series that I want to do over the course of 2022, you know, taking Formula 1 cars around the world, putting them on some different venues, and I think, yeah, the first one we've picked is a rather good one. Right, we've got probably as close to a full battery as we're going to be able to get. Let's go... Oh, no, we want attack mode, don't we? Oh, not the best line. Oh, to start our lap, but one final time then around the mountain. I don't think we're going to lose much delta because of that, of course, such a short run. Oh, in towards cell one there, but big, big snap of oversteer on the exit. Somehow hanging on to that that time round, and now we've got to try and chase the time. Oh, oh, no! Oh, that's gutting. First time where I think we've ever managed to loot this thing just through lack of grip. It takes a lot, actually, to fire this thing around, you know, considering that wasn't just on throttle as well. You know, we were trying to get through the next corner, but I'm, I'm not giving up there. We're going to take the fuel out. We're going to give it a fresh set of tyres. We're going to put the battery on full charge. Let's give it one proper final lap here, but I can't believe I've actually stacked the Merc on iRacing, but of course, if you were going to do it anywhere, of course, it was going to be the mountain. Right, we're trying to beat some heat into the tyres then, ready for this final lap here of the mountain on iRacing in this beautiful Mercedes Formula 1 car. We've taken a bit of fuel out of it, so there should be a little bit more pace there as well. But yeah, about to get ready then. This is such a cool combo. I mean, it's just so much fun. And, you know, a lot of F1 tracks now aren't a major challenge, but on iRacing, with the sense of speed you get from this sim as well, it is certainly about to get interesting here. One more lap here from the mountain. Can we try and get this one hooked up? And what is the time going to be? Not the best line out of turn one. I think we took a bit too much speed on the way in, but that's okay. At the final corner. It's a 133-2. There we go. That was pretty much, I think, sensibly what I'm going to be able to get out of the car at the moment there. Of course, like I said, no setup or anything like that. We just took some fuel out 
and it had a full charger battery there, but what a lap that felt like. There were a couple of very, very sketchy moments, you know, going up towards the top of the hill there. We had one bit where the tyres really didn't grip up, and then suddenly re found everything they needed there, and I thought we were off just the next corner after we binned it on that last lap, but what a combo this is on iRacing. I, I long for the day, you know, we, if we could safely see Formula 1 cars at Mount Panorama, I would absolutely be there for that, but oh, ho, 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 this AMG Mercedes, you know, when I come back to it on iRacing, I always forget just how insane it does feel on this sim, you know, in many ways it feels more grippy than, you know, the uh, My Team car that we use, of course, that thing's completely maxed out on F1 2021, but just the sense of speed, the feel of the grip as well, you get on iRacing certainly does make it just that extra little bit of an experience as well. And you're being able to take it to tracks like this as well just makes it all the cooler. Of course, like I said, maybe this will become, you know, sort of like a weekly series as well. I've got plenty more tracks I want to take this thing to on iRacing as well. Of course, if you want to see more iRacing content from me, click the link down below. There will be a link over to my second channel where we upload about two or three times a week, you know, going through... Uh, just starting out the NASCAR Cup Series, Daytona should be live in a couple of days. They were doing a lot of IMSA in at the TCRs as well. You know, I really do enjoy iRacing as a sim as we try and expand sort of the content that we're doing on the channel. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Let me know down in the comments below what other tracks you'd like us to take on here on iRacing. And I think to finish off, surely, we've, we've just got to see if this thing will do the jump down the end of the chase there but yeah thank you all so much as always you know at the time of recording this we're really really close to 37,000 subscribers if you could help me get one step closer that would be greatly greatly appreciated obviously trying to hit 50k by the end of the year I mean we technically made it over <laughs> oh we've got to watch that on the replay but yeah if you guys do want to see more Definitely get yourself subscribed. Leave a like if you've enjoyed. Let's just see this Mercedes try and go over the jump there. Because he got very, very skittish. Hit the jump. Oh! <laughs> that's, that's I don't think, quite the racing line through that. I think we'll, we'll take that back to Toto and say we had a good laugh in it. And then I think we'll run away very, very quickly. But yeah, we'll be back very, very soon, though, with more Formula 1 content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.